man. We got 60 minutes of football. We're going to be world champions. We got to start somewhere. It's right here. Got to come out the cellar. We got to come out for 60 minutes. Dog fight. Ready? Hey. Our whole season comes down to one play. Do you understand? Got to hold on to it. you ever sold out in your life, this is the time to do it right now. Hold on to your Now is the time. Special right. I know you can do it. Hold on to your I know you can do it. Let's go. One, two, three. Go. Get him, baby. Get him. Get him. Ow. defense winner. You guys got to win it right here. You guys got to win it. Every season and every game Men united in a single aim All our heroes in a season story Men with guts, moments of glory A test of strength and a test of pride In a single name of battle. Sunday, October 4th, was the most peculiar day in NFL history. The real players were on strike, and a group of total strangers were trying to take their place. As we head into this unchartered territory this afternoon, there are a lot more questions than answers. For openers, who are these guys? Uh, the names are unfamiliar. It's like doing almost a college game or the first preseason game. Well, first of all, before the kickoff, I got to find out how to pronounce everybody's name. Some solve the pronunciation problem with one word. That first week, replacement players were harassed, fans were absent or skeptical, and coaches deserved the greatest sympathy. With their motley crew of cops and car salesmen, bricklayers and bartenders, they had to start all over from square one. Okay, we got the national anthem, fellas. Get it right around the side. We started putting our team together on the airplane in the galley. We actually started down uh, writing names on the napkins, trying to figure out who we were going to get in. Our first practice, we had 19 people, three of which were quarterbacks, two of which quit the following day five of which were declared ineligible by the league because they weren't who they said they were. One had died four years prior to coming out on our team. 
No one expected these imposters to be as game ready as their predecessors. And to put it bluntly, they weren't. Some plays never really got started. Others seemed like they would never end. Still, the effort was sincere, and overall, these willing volunteers got high marks for creativity and improvisation. 40, 45 to the 50, to the 45 of the Saints. The ball comes loose. Another Ram has picked it up. This is a line. But these games weren't comedy reviews or fairy tales. They actually counted in the NFL standings. And soon the romantics gave way to the realists. It was almost like forming a new league, but you had to do it in 10 days. Heck, the games count, so you only have to win the games and then maybe we'll be able to take advantage of something like this. The Washington Redskins got a head start on the road to the Super Bowl by finding prime replacement talent that won three straight. Touchdown! All right! And a new single game receiving record. San Diego found success with recruits like number 50, Mike Humiston, a former Indianapolis Colt who'd been out of the game for three years. When the Chargers called, Humiston was working as a deputy sheriff in Red Bluff, California. After thinking it over, Humiston came back for a special reason. In 1984, my son Ben was diagnosed as having muscular dystrophy. I was very fortunate enough to get the opportunity to play for the Chargers. Um, There's a lot of things that I told him that I wanted to do for him, and one of the things that he wanted to have was a quad runner. In going back and playing with the Chargers, I was able to buy him a, a quad runner, uh, we were able to go to Disneyland, and they allowed me to do some things that I certainly wouldn't have had the opportunity to do had I not gone back and played football. As a Charger captain, Humiston led his adopted team to three wins and lived a dream that all other replacement players shared. This has been a real good time, this opportunity to, to play some football, make some money, and if it's over next week, it's over. You know, whatever happens, happens, but, uh, you know, we all had our, our day in the sun today. It was, it was real fun. Let's go, let's go. Hey, let's go now. Man, let's all go together and let's make it happen now. Let's... During three wild weeks of trial and error, teamwork began to fall into place. In fact, sometimes it was tough to tell substitute performance from the real thing. When the strike ended, they were reluctant to let the dream die. In the end, even former critics gave credit to these men who did their best in a difficult situation. It's all right. We may be scared, but we're the best ones. I tell you, it's something I remember for the rest of my life, you know. Even if I don't play another down, you know, I play these first three games, and it feels wonderful. I don't anticipate going back and playing any more football. Certainly the, the opportunity that the Chargers gave me, they made some of the dreams that we had as a family become a reality. The down-home style of Houston head coach Jerry Glanville was embodied by his black clothes, bright country wit, and boundless enthusiasm. Once the strike ended, the surprising Oilers engineered some thrilling twists and turns on the road to the Super Bowl. After four consecutive last place finishes in the AFC Central Division, the Oilers earned a wild card berth and a place deep in the hearts of Texans. All the way, all the way, all the way. Go 
Warren. Come on, Warren. Find him, Warren. Find him. In the playoffs, quarterback Warren Moon enjoyed the finest day of his NFL career. But the Oilers had to work overtime to beat Seattle. Tony Zendejas with the kick of his life. On the line here. Snap back, ball down, kick up. On its way. And it is gone. It is gone. The Oilers win in overtime. Defeating Seattle. 23-20. to 20. Advancing to Denver. While good old boy Glanville created a good young team in Houston, the Buffalo Bills were revived by the only NFL head coach with a Harvard master's degree in English history. Marv Levy once studied knights and kings. Now his passions are aroused by rookies and referees. They're offside. Hey, ref, they're offside. Uh, sorry. I saw it, but I'm not going to get on them today. What's the flag for? 89 through his helmet. Coming over to the bench. No, he wasn't. He cannot take his helmet off and throw the helmet anywhere on the oh, field of play. That's not a chicken. It is a chicken. Call. Cover it up. Damn it. Cover it up. The time to cover the ball up and the time to fight for yard. Damn, it's sick of rookies. It's sick of rookies. I can't believe it. Seattle rookie linebacker Brian Bosworth provoked strong reactions once he made pro football his chosen profession. Raiders rookie Bo Jackson, number 34, likewise created a stir by making the game his hobby. In a Week 12 confrontation, Bo showed the boss who was boss. And a quick pitch to Jackson, getting an Allen block, cuts under it, bangs through Bosworth, touchdown Raiders! Holy Toledo! Jackson took on Bosworth and just blasted and dragged him into the end zone. And off to Bo, off the left side, gets to the outside, first down, he shoots to the 20, the 30, they'll never catch him! He's at the 50, the 30, the 20! Count him, folks! Silver and black, Bo Jackson! By season's end, future Hall of Famers had upstaged the budding superstars. The Seahawks' Steve Largent finished the year with 751 career receptions to become the NFL's all-time leading receiver. Chicago's Walter Payton announced his retirement after a phenomenal 13-year career that saw him carry the ball more times and run for more yardage than any man who ever played the sport. The Bears retired the jersey of this extraordinary athlete, whose spirit symbolized pro football at its best. While Chicago saluted a fabled career, Indianapolis celebrated a fairy tale season. Drill that guy. Colts head coach Ron Meyer displayed the personality of a smooth salesman, but his boldest move involved buying, not selling. A mid-season trade for Eric Dickerson, number 29, sent shockwaves throughout the league. Foes used to regard a contest with the Colts as a comforting thought. But in 1987, it became a lingering pain. By the last game of the season, a team long accustomed to playing out the string found itself playing for the AFC East title. on the delay, gives it to Dickerson, trying to get outside, cuts up to the 30, he's at the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, he did it, 34 yards for Eric. The crowd is on its feet, this one is over. The Colts win it 24 to 6 and head to the playoffs for the first time in 10 years, and it is official, the Colts are AFC East champions. From last place to first. This victory belongs to Jim Irsay, who orchestrated that trade and, and hammered it through. And it belongs to his father, who has quite honestly struggled for a few years, made the move here. 
In a season of changes and surprises, an unexpected development found a longtime plotter emerge as one of the front runners on the road to the Super Bowl. In America's party town, the central theme in last year's Cajun celebrations was a football team that took 20 years to complete its potty training. For two decades since their creation in 1967, the New Orleans Saints failed to post a winning season. No other team in the history of professional sports even comes close to matching that mark of futility. In 1980, victory-starved Saint fans dubbed their team the Aints. Quite clearly, their patience was wearing thin. Losing something you never get used to. Right in the midst of football season, I see a good friend of mine, and he's trying to be nice. He doesn't even talk football because he knows it's such a negative thing. That's a terrible thing to live with. In 1986, Jim Mora became the newest man to accept coaching's biggest challenge. But the results, though promising, fell short of Mora's goal. I wanted to have a winning season because this is something that this team had never experienced or this, this organization had never experienced and I felt like it was important that we achieve that and get that monkey off our back. Kozar dropping into the end zone, he's hit! The ball goes free, it's another safety! Nobody enjoyed victory more than Saint owner Tom Benson. Conversely, nobody endured defeat worse than Jim Mora. They're better than we are. We're not good enough. We shouldn't even be thinking about beating this 49ers. We shouldn't be talking about it because the Saints ain't good enough. And you guys shouldn't write about us being a playoff team and all that bullshit to us malarkey. We ain't good enough to beat those guys and it was proven out there today. It's that simple. We're not good enough yet. We got a long way to go. We got a lot of work to do. We're close, and close don't mean and You can put that on TV for me. The 1987 Saints would never be quite the same. Oh, I believe. Sweeping left, he stopped short of the goal line. The Saints have held him. The Saints have held him inside the one on fourth down, and the ball will go back to New Orleans. The Saints are winners for the first time in 21 years. Their first winning season assured, Mora's men went on to win their final four regular season games. And all over the South, the Saints were Aints no more. They decided they could win. And uh, usually that's the difference between winning and losing is figuring out that you can. They're the best. They're the best. Absolutely the best. What do you guys think? They're the best of us. Right. And here we go, man. Looks like we're off and running. And uh, finally, we got it going. Good things come to those who wait, and uh, the people here have waited 21 years for this. It's a fantastic feeling, and I know one that you must cherish as a former player. Well, I do. It, it, it's a unique organization in that the Saints came to New Orleans in 1967. So these fans are great football fans in the South. They've been very loyal to this team. In a lot of lean years, they've waited a long time. 
Dalton Hilliard behind Abair on second and ten. Bobby looks to throw again into the end zone for Martin. Who would have thought that on the biggest day in St. History, the Minnesota Vikings would be such party poopers? That's how we feel. 21 years season ticket holder, my friend, and I'll stick with them too. I cried when they came on, and I'm crying now. Great season, great season. Indeed, it had been a great season. And at game's end, America's party town joined their patron saints in tribute. Last year, I had hopes, but we've been hoping for 21 years. And every year we say, this year, this year. So finally, this year have come. Thank God. Thank God for the saints. San Francisco is the most seductive of cities. The town's alluring rhythms are as sensuous as a samba. Its football team also moves to a beat that is more rumba than rumble. Ranked number one in both defense and offense, the 49ers scored the most points in pro football but did everything so easily. They never seemed to dirty their uniforms. We get labeled as a finesse team, and we get labeled as a very beautiful offense to watch, and always being relegated to the role of being the, the designated wimps of the NFL can get real old. But leading the league in rushing either means there's 27 other wimps out there, or maybe we're doing something right. What they did right was to get the ball to Jerry Rice. Number 80 was the most dominant offensive player of the year and scored the most touchdowns by a receiver in NFL history. Complete it to right. He's the 40. He's the 30. He's the 20. Touchdown 49ers. How fast is he? He's going to throw long. And for Rice, Rice is there. He's got it. Touchdown 49ers. The 49ers compiled the best record in the NFL, but were never perceived as red-blooded heroes. Unlike the red meat-eating bears, champions of the NFC Central. Don't change your damn rock! Run a shoot! I don't give a run the shoot, catch the ball! Mike Ditka was a master of menace. But the head bear was often more Teddy than Grizzly. He whimsically called the Vikings Metrodome a roller rink and skated into a blizzard of controversy. Ditka absorbed notoriety like a sponge, sopping up the controversy, setting the stage for dramatic victories. Winning the Central Division, the Bears chilled the hopes of the pesky Minnesota Vikings. But the Vikings, submerged under an ice cap of defeat, surfaced in the wild card playoffs. Carter, it's a 16 to the 20, sidestep, cuts back at the 25, flips the man, he's to the 30, 35, he's to the 40, he's gonna go! He's across the 50 yard line, the 30, touchdown Anthony Carter, 84 yards! The Vikings snowballed the Saints, then stomped the 49ers, overpowering the NFL's best team.
The Vikings, a mediocre eight and seven in the regular season, defied the odds makers because number 81, Anthony Carter, defied gravity. Carter caught 10 passes for a playoff record 227 yards and ran Minnesota to a surprising 36 to 24 victory. Last week it was the 12 and 3 New Orleans Saints with the second best record in football this week. In the 13 and 2 San Francisco 49ers. How do you like his name? Yeah. Just as unlikely as the Twins are the Vikings and uh, Who's to say that this isn't going to be a blessed year for the upper Midwest? This afternoon, we welcome you to Frigid Soldier Field on the shores of Lake Michigan for the National Football Conference playoffs featuring the Washington Redskins against the Chicago Bears. And a good afternoon, everyone. I'm Wayne Larravee. The temperature, 9 degrees. The wind out of the south at about 2 miles an hour. The wind chill hovering around 0 degrees. The Redskins entered the playoffs like Steven Spielberg on Oscar night. Overlooked and forgotten. In 1987, they built a solid, if unspectacular, 11-4 record with a timely offense and a sturdy defense. Champions of the NFC East, the Redskins clinched a playoff berth sooner than any other team. Yet when headline teams were discussed, the Redskins rated small typeface. But in the divisional playoffs, the Redskins leapt to the front page by rallying from a 14 to nothing deficit to beat the Bears. The 21 to 17 victory reaffirmed to everyone what the Redskins knew all along. I told y'all, baby, we the number one. Once again, the road to the Super Bowl would pass through Washington. The Cleveland Browns defense is nicknamed the Dogs. And with fans of every pedigree howling for a berth in Super Bowl 22, in 1987, these lovable mutts turned vicious. Their bite was even worse than their bark. And in 1987, Cleveland's Dogs were the AFC's top-ranked defense. The Browns sprinted to their third straight Central Division title, guided by their mild-mannered 24-year-old quarterback, Bernie Kosar, number 19. He is certainly not a picturesque NFL drop-back quarterback, as it were. But I've never felt that the way you look getting something done is as important as your ability to get it done. As a result, I think there's probably even a greater respect for him because as some people view him, he's overcoming that lack of natural athletic ability. In 1987, Kosar threw 22 touchdown passes, only nine interceptions, and his 62% completion rate was the AFC's best. For the second straight season, the Browns won a berth in the AFC Championship game, where Cleveland's Clark Kent would once again meet Denver's Superman. Here we go. All right, left, that left. Draw right, fullback, slant on, set hut. Set hut. Hurry up! Red 28! Red 28! Hut! Hut! Number seven, John Elway, is pro football's man of steel and a quarterback whose mighty talents make the Denver Broncos equally super. In his fifth pro season, Elway was mobile and durable. 
and pro football's most versatile, dangerous weapon. He ran, passed, and even punted. And once, when the Seahawks were advancing a fumble, number seven made a touchdown saving tackle. No other player beat opponents in so many different ways, and no other quarterback combines such mobility with sheer arm strength. John's arm is incredibly strong, I'm telling you. He can probably throw the ball over 60 miles an hour. We uh, have what we call a jugs machine. It's like a tennis ball machine or baseball machine that shoots the ball out. Well, this one shoots out footballs, and you can crank it up to like 80. We caught on that uh, just the other day to try to simulate John's speed because there's no way that you can catch from another quarterback or from a coach and get the same effect. He sort of gets you to catch the ball with your hands more, too, because of the concentration factor of the speed of the ball. And then you know if you're going to catch it on your body, get ready for some pain. <laughs> because uh, they could literally stick to you. You probably wouldn't even have to catch it. So. <laughs> When you have great quarterbacks that have great arms, you're never out of a football game. And John has tremendous confidence uh, in his ability now because he's come through in so many tough situations to win football games for us. Tight. Tight, tight. Not only does he have confidence, but the confidence of your whole offensive and defensive team. Sewell shovels it back on the fleet record Elway, and here it comes long for Vance Johnson. Open 15. Sparked by the three amigos, wide receivers Mark Jackson, Vance Johnson, and Ricky Natil, the Broncos began playing like a Super Bowl contender at midseason. But along with Senor Elway and his amigos, Denver's championship dreams rode on a defense that featured seven players in new positions, along with tough veterans like Rulon Jones, number 75. Reverse! Jones and the Broncos began their Super Bowl stretch run with a Week 10 thriller against the Bears. Chicago was vanquished in the final seconds. Then the division-leading Chargers never knew what hit them. What happened? What play was that? Denver overcame a three-game lead by San Diego. And in a snowy season finale against the Chargers, they wrapped up their third Western Division championship in four years. Clark takes it at the 28, crosses the 30, gets out near the 40, and still spinning to the right on his feet at the 40-yard line. He's across the 50, the Charger 40, to the 30, breaking a tackle. He might score. Casey Clark returns. With the best record in the AFC, the Broncos raced into the playoffs, where the wild card Oilers turned into Jokers. Second and 11, throw the pass into the end zone. It is fumbled at around the one yard line, and the Broncos have recovered the ball. The Oilers never recovered, as Elway capped a 34 10 victory that propelled Denver into the AFC Championship game. For the second straight season, the road to the Super Bowl would be a collision course for Kosar's Browns and Elway's Broncos. San Diego, here we come. Redskins got them on the run. Led by Williams, Golden Ar San Diego, here we come. Bring on the dogs and their angry crowds to the best fans in the league. And when they went back to Cleveland, we'll be cheering them on when they leave. One play at a time, at 60 minutes, our football. Let's go ahead. Okay? Yep. All right, let's bust your ass. One, ball. two, three, go ahead. Go ahead. In every season's quest for fame, men united with a single aim. Meet 
the challenge of every goal Then set their hearts on the Super Bowl A test of strength and a test of pride A team united in a single name A battle burning with victories flame Back is Doug Williams, sets up, plenty of time, going deep, over the middle, got Kelvin Bryant, the 10, the 5, touchdown, Washington Redskins! Kosar backpedals, firing, caught by Slaughter over the middle, it's hot, loose, and intercepted by the Broncos. And Elway drills the pass, finger-tip-tap, touchdown, looking to the end zone. First and goal at the two, they give it to Sewell on the end of round, coming left, and Steve Charles will score. You guys are coming apart! Come on, Wayne, start it down there! You to throw a pump action fake. Throw it out and in the corner of the end zone and touchdown! Leo What started off as Redskins domination has now changed. We on our way, baby! We on our way! They hand off to Biner. Kosar to throw. Now steps up in the pocket. Loops it for Biner who got it the 15, 10, 5! Touchdown, Rawls! Here's Elway retreating to the 9-yard line. In trouble. Dancing around. Breaks free. Firing. It is caught by Jackson at the 25. Breaks a tackle, gets a first down at the 35, 40, 45, 50. He's going for a touchdown. Body graceful, body proud. Stand tall to the waves and the roar of the crowd. Body steel and body stone. Super Bowl for the second year in a row. They are going to San Diego. 